guys, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. How you doing? Time for a little brain smoke today. Um, as you know, a lot of times I end up uh, spending time on social media, just kind of browsing around, watching the questions that come up. And one of the things that I've noticed is that there's always a lot of blame to go around when it comes to products. I'm sure you hear people talking about, well, brand X works better than brand Y, brand A works, works better than brand B. And um, I find that if we really stop and think about it, uh, I sat down and made a list today uh, of why color goes sideways. That's my way of saying, you know, the color goes bad, just comes up with unexpected results. And I thought, well, what, let me just make a list of the reasons I think that color can go bad for us. And so I made a list. I made 14 different reasons that color goes bad. In this episode, I'm only going to share seven with you. And then I'll come back and do a second episode, and we'll talk about the other seven. So let's start at the beginning. <clears throat> and first of all, it is preparation. One of the things that's important for me as a colorist is to prepare the hair for any kind of a color service. And I do that by, of course, clarifying the hair before I paint it. Uh, today, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people still don't do that. But I try to get people to understand that the hair is a filter. So it picks up, you know, during the day, over a period of months, over a period of weeks, whatever. It picks up impurities that are in the air. Uh, it can be coated by different styling products, pomades, gels, hairsprays. All of those things can have a detrimental effect on the color results or even getting achieving a color that we want to have. For example, if the hair picks up uh, impurities in the air or from the water, mineral deposits from the water, hopefully it makes sense to you that if I apply a chemical on a head of hair that already has mineral deposits in it, it's possible I could create a chemical reaction. Some of you may have done that uh, already. You know, you may have had that experience. So it's important to clarify the hair first. It's very important that we do that so that we have a clean canvas to work on. So that can cause our color to go sideways. If I work on a head of hair where they've been using heavy emollients and heavy styling products that actually are not very water soluble, is it possible that could impede my color from taking well? If it's a senior citizen that has gray hair and they've been using facial creams and pushing them into their hairline, is it possible that could create a situation where the color's not going to take well? well? See, all of that can be resolved if we simply clarify the hair first. Second of all, what kind of hair am I working on? You know, if I am working, if I think I'm, if I'm working on color treated hair that's been colored before, and I approach it with the same strategies that I would use on virgin hair, I may not have success because I have to take into consideration the history of that hair. So it's very important that we understand the difference between virgin hair and color treated hair. The same principles apply if you have sections of the head of the hair strand where you have virgin hair no color at all and then you have previously color previous color on the hair both of those areas are going to take color differently because of the way they they're set up because of their structure so it's very important that we think about that virgin or color treated how about porosity you know porosity is an important reason that many hair colors fade. It's an important reason that our color comes out different color than we expected. Remember, when we talk about hair being porous, it's no longer a baseball, it's now a wiffle ball. So you've got holes in that cuticle layer. The uptake of liquid and the uptake of color is going to be more dramatic with that hair. So if I think about a color that I use, and if I'm using a blended color line, which mostly all color lines are today, I know that in a blended color line, I'm always going to have what we call background, which is the foundation. It keeps the color on track between salon visits. It prevents you or visually prevents you from seeing too much of a tonal loss between salon visits. So background is important for us to remember, but if I apply a head, a, let's say a red shade that has background and tone, so it's red and tone, and it has background, which is most often brown or gray, 
I apply to the head of hair, the uptake of that color is going to be primarily background. So when I look at that hair strand and I wipe it down, I'm not even going to see my red shade that I was trying to achieve. So now I'm in a color correction situation where I have to add more color in in order to push that background back to give me a color that I want to have. That's where all of this terminology comes where they say, well, I used a level seven and it came out like a level five. Well, why do you think that happened? Nobody made a level five accidentally and put it in a level seven tube. What happened was the way that the color developed, the uptake of the color in the hair. So ask yourself, is that hair have porosity? If it does, fix it first. That's why I love to clarify the hair first because then it allows me the opportunity to do any kind of treatments that are required before I have to paint that hair. That hair. So it really sets me up to win as a colorist. Next, does the hair have extreme damage? You know what I mean. We've all been there. <clears throat> We've ended up coloring hair that we knew good and well shouldn't be put we shouldn't be putting color on because the hair is held together with one disulfide bond you can tell by looking at it you know you can tell by taking it in your thumbs and your your fingers and stretching it and seeing how well it stretches and comes back to its original shape or maybe it snaps on the way to the stretch if that happens that tells you that hair is not ready to be painted that hair needs to be rebuilt it needs to be restructured but we don't do that sometimes because we go, hey, I'll roll the dice. I'll go ahead and paint the hair. I'll go to the back room. I'll pray to the color gods, Pokey and Gumby. Hopefully it'll come out. And then we take our chances. Instead of saying, wait, this hair does not need to be painted right now. It needs to be restructured first. How about hair with more than one color? What if you have more than one color challenge that you're encountering? You can't resolve that with one formula unless you're making the hair black. If you're making them black, you're pretty easy. You can pretty much resolve those. But when you have more than one color within the hair, each color has to be addressed individually. So that can cause my color to go sideways. You see that happen when you do normal highlights or when you do balayage or any hand painting when you're lightening the hair first. Sometimes it's not even. So you have dark areas and light areas, shadows, if you will. And then you try to even that all out with one toner. <clears throat> well, if there's a variation in the depth of light reflection and depth of light absorption, there's no way that any toner, unless the toner's darker than the lightness that you created, there's no way any toner is going to balance those light and darks out. So what that tells us is we have to make sure that that canvas is even to ensure a great color result. What about hair texture? Hair texture is essential today because, believe it or not, fine hair takes color differently than coarse hair does. Fine hair, because it has a very small cortex, the uptake of color is more dramatic, more deep sometimes. You know those fine hairs around the front of the hairline? And they paint them and they're, they're deeper. They've got more depth in them. The reason that is is because the core is very thin. So the uptake is extreme, but the release of color is also extreme. Think about the fine client, fine hair clients you have, that when they come back for their retouch and refresh, their hair seems to have faded more than clients with medium to coarser textures. Why is that? because of the texture of the hair. So when we formulate color, we have to also take into consideration the texture of the hair because that will determine our ability to achieve success. Many people find that challenge with coarser hair. Because it's fat hair, they wanna go after it. They wanna attack it with high volumes of developer and high levels of color. But they don't realize that coarser textures of hair have less cuticle. And so if I attack it with not only high alkalinity, but also high volumes of developer, I'm literally going to rip the cuticle off the hair strand. And now if you have orange hair running around, that's, that's exactly what you're going to have. And remember, the cuticle is a protective layer 
that protects the hair. So when your cuticle's gone, your hair is pretty much in its final phases anyway. Very, very important to think about hair texture. How about unattainable goals? That's number seven. So we choose a goal that we know is unattainable, but we try to get there. We try to cheat. We try to add heat. We try to use high volumes of developer. And then when we don't achieve the goal, and we don't, we're not honest with the client and tell her that's an unattainable goal today, then we go into sales mode, right? <laughs> well, it's not what we wanted, but it really makes your skin tone look good. It really brings out your eye color. To see the struggles that we have, I've just listed seven of them for you. Number one, preparation. Number two, determine whether you're working on previously colored hair or whether you're working on virgin hair. Porosity, if you have porosity, balance the porosity out before you do your color service. If the hair is extremely damaged, rebuild, restructure, or physically eliminate all the, the, the detrimental stuff, get rid of that so that that hair color will come out successful for you. Hair with more than one color. Think about that when you're formulating your hair color. Do I have a different color in the front of the head than I do in the back? Do you realize most people do? Do you realize most people do not have the same color on their entire head? How about your gray hair clients, where they're gray in the front and they're dark in the back? You can't do that with one formula. <laughs> you, you just can't, unless you're taking her to pale yellow or unless you're making her black. In that case, you can do that. <clears throat> and then hair texture. Each each hair texture, we address it differently to create better successful results. And finally, choosing an unattainable goal, not a great practice, not a smart strategy. Clients push us into that because they bring in pictures from Instagram or Pinterest, and they say, this is what I want to be, and they don't realize it's a Photoshop picture. So we have to make sure that the goal is achievable. One of the best ways to make sure a goal is achievable, especially if you are lightening a previously tinted hair and she wants to be extremely light or pale, test strand the hair. Test strand doesn't mean you're a beginner. Test strand means that you are assessing your ability to achieve successful results. Those are seven things that go, cause hair color to go sideways. Did you notice that in none of those did I say bad product, poor care, bad hair color, bad developer, because it's not relevant to why color goes bad. Here's the facts. 90% of the reason that colors don't come out the way we expect them to has nothing to do with the product we use. They have everything to do with our behaviors. See, so it's not the product. But if we make, an, a, a, we make an error in choosing the wrong formula, that's on us. That's our behavior. But the product itself is not responsible for this. It is our personal behavior. These are things that we do all the time subconsciously, and we don't realize we do them. Our little idiosyncrasies. Think about the things that we do, or each one of us individually, that are, that are, that are kind of just they're native to us. Some people that always have to put a splash of copper into their formula, or some people that have to put something in. They have to do this, or when they color the, with their brush, the way they do their application. All of those variables are what could cause color to go sideways. So my mentor always said to me, he said, Dennis, you want to master hair color? Master the variables. Because when you master the variables, you've mastered everything. So keep that in mind, master your variables, think about these seven things. Hopefully this has helped you. I've enjoyed uh, spending a few minutes with you today. If it has, tell your friends. And until then, I'm Captain Color. From my heart to yours, I'm out. I'll see you all soon. Have a great day.